Yes, as you've probably heard, Google's self-driving car hit a bus, but it was just kind of a little fender bender. On Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2016, a self-driving Lexus RX 450 attempted to navigate around some sandbags placed in a wide lane. A bus traveling at 15 miles per hour approached the Google car from behind, occupying the same wide lane as the smart car. The Lexus then attempted to re-enter the center of the lane while moving at a speed of two miles per hour. Google reported in a statement last week that the smart car anticipated that the bus would slow down to allow the self-driving car to continue, but the bus did not. While the smart car re-entered the center of the lane, it struck the side of the bus causing minor damage to the front left fender, front wheel, and a sensor. There were no injuries and no police report was filed. Now you may be thinking, Jace, it's a total non-story, little fender bender, why mention it? Well, I mention it because some people will use this as proof that if self-driving cars can make little mistakes, they can make big mistakes, leading to loss of innocent life. Imagine the news flash in a few years where some wonderful innocent child is dead due to a car accident led by a self-driving car. Well, tragically, that is inevitable. It's going to happen. But the reality is it will happen a lot less with self-driving cars because computers make fewer computational errors than we do. Think about it. Are you a Sony Xperia fan like I am? Well, you'll be happy to know that Sony has launched what it's calling an evolution of the Xperia brand. The new reimagined brand hopes to be more than just a smartphone, but a smart connected device capable of changing the way you interact with the world. The first three phones in the new X series are the Xperia X, the Xperia X Performance, and the Xperia XA. The Xperia X will use the Hexa-Core Qualcomm Snapdragon 650 processor, and the Xperia X Performance will use the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820. The Xperia X and the X Performance will have 5-inch 1080p displays, while the XA will use a 5-inch 720p display, along with the MediaTek MT6755, an octa-core Cortex A53 processor. The Xperia X and Xperia X Performance include Sony's next-generation camera technology called Predictive Hybrid Autofocus. Developed in collaboration with Sony's camera engineers, it lets you choose your subject and then predicts its motion, so you can capture the action in perfect focus without any blur. As well as camera tech, Sony says that the new X series has next generation battery technology with Sony's smart battery management, which the company says will deliver up to two days of battery life. When it comes to design, each X series smartphone has curved glass display within a rounded continuous frame, while the Xperia XA features an edge to edge display. Also, the Xperia X and Xperia X Performance and Xperia XA each have a range of style covers and come in four colors, white, graphite black, lime gold, and rose gold. And for those of you looking for news regarding the new version of Android coming up called Android N, we got this. In some new mock-ups from the folks at Android Police, we get our first glimpse at what changes it can expect when Android N rolls around. As you can see, the notification shade looks like it'll provide quite a bit more info per notification, and the height of each notification has been stretched to accommodate this. In Lollipop, notifications on the shade have a card-like feel with gaps of negative space between each one. N looks like it's filling up these gaps. While both have a very sleek material design look, Android N opts for a lengthy sheet of contiguous paper over the card layout. We assume they will still be swipeable. Now, anyone with real geek cred will tell you that the number one issue we hope manufacturers improve upon is battery life, and Oppo has hurt us. At the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Oppo has unveiled a new solution to the battery problem. Called Super VOOC Flash Charge, the technology is still in the early stages of development, but it will ultimately allow smartphones to reach 100% battery charge in just 15 minutes. The development will inevitably be limited to Oppo devices. However, there is a chance they could license it for broad usage from OEMs around the world. It will be available in both micro USB and USB type C configurations. Thanks for watching guys, you know the drill. You can connect with me here and also my Android family right along here. I shall see you next week on Android Weekly.